Erica is kind of asking a question that I know that you're going to get to. Um, and and this, this notion that you bring up about a clean transaction may help. But we have people, she says, um, who, we, who just want to be kept informed and have, and have them really understand our person. He wants this too. Is there a way to invite people without scaring them away? They might yes. be getting more than they bargain for responsibility-wise. And then she continues with the question, I understand about the clean ask. My son is just wanting certain people updated to understand him, but afraid that they may think he's asking more of them. Mm. Well, you know, I think it's, it's, it's an interesting conversation to have with your family and your friends. You can, you can invite people to an online network and you can um, give them no privileges whatsoever to interact at all. They're only there to read or, you know, in social media, you'd say you're inviting them to be a lurker. So that's all they do is read. Yeah. You, could, you could tell people, um, I want you to know more about what's going on. And, you know, this is, um, you know, we're going to post really good times that we have. We're going to post pictures of birthday parties. We're going to, but we'll also post when we have a hospital surgery scheduled. And we'll post updates of how, how you know, our loved one is doing on a daily basis. And um, you don't have to respond. If there is an opening of something that you think you can help out, phone me, pick up the phone. That means they have complete control and they're not being asked anything. So if that's their comfort zone or that's where your comfort zone is, in just delicately helping them understand more deeply, you can do that too. Because like all technology, everything that you do in the way that you use it um, is going to respond to what you need it to do. So, um, you know, some people use email one way for business. Some people use email, you know, a different email address for only their personal stuff. All of this is completely customizable down to the, per like the individual user. So some people are just going to read. Some people are going to um, have full control. They can put in dates. They can ask questions. They can um, m m drop files into that filing cabinet. They can um, put stuff into the calendar. And some people um, will only be able to um, read and private message. You mm -hmm. can customize it the way you want according to the kind of relationships that you're trying to build with people. I think that's such great advice. And, it, and when, I'm wondering if when getting people onto ties or whatever care network that they choose, that in that orientation email that you send, you can perhaps signal to them that, this is a way to, to be aware of what's going on, but also a way for them to participate in a way that makes sense to them. Yeah. So, you know, you kind of signal to them that, yeah, you can kind of read, but it's also, um, I know as you're going to talk about in a few minutes, it's matching, you know, what they can do and their capabilities with being able to help and participate. Yeah, that's right. And, and it's knowing who, the, who are these people. So who do you want in a network of support? Who, um, how do you even begin? Many people I speak to, many caregivers um, I speak to say, I can't, I, I, I can't have one of those networks of support mm -hmm. because there is nobody I could ask. I don't know a single soul who could a help me. And, um, you know, uh, and, and, and it may be very challenging. It might be only one or two people, which is fine. Um, but we're going to talk about beginning today, beginning at the beginning of building a network of s support for yourself and your family. Because don't forget, this is also um, a network of support for the caregiver too. Um, so I think, you know, here you begin by listing of people who have ever offered to help, uh, a list of professionals who are involved, 
Um, then you list their skills, talents, and preferences. So um, including those professionals, you know, this person for foot care, that person for uh, geriatric psychiatry, that person for orthopedics, whatever it may be. Um, so this is just getting your head around who's involved or, and also who could be involved to be helpful. And just for our participants, Donna, I think this might be really great to go back to session number three or to go back to their notes or if they're able to watch it again, because when Donna talked about the care map, this, this, this care map can really help you fill in some of these, oh, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a key tool for building your network. And, you know, I want that person on, as a regular supporter. I don't want that person because I don't like that person. <laughs> or that person has let me down before. I know I can't count on that person. So, so yeah, the care map is very helpful um, in beginning to structure a coordinated network of support that you're in charge of. And then begin to identify um, some tasks for each person. And we'll go to the next slide. So here's an example. I was thinking of people I actually know <laughs> when I wrote this um, example of, uh, it's, it's, and it's not my sister, and my sister is Karen, not Susan. But, uh, but here's somebody I know. So I decided, I thought, okay, hypothetically speaking, my sister Susan is good at or likes to manage money. So that's what she does like at work. So she's very good at it. She's also very good at tidying up. She comes in my house and starts tidying up. And she loves to shop. She also loves to talk. She's a bit of a gossip, loves to talk about other people. But you know what? She's really got a kind heart and she is somebody I'm very close to. But those are what she's good at or she likes to do. So next slide. So Susan could in, you know, and any one or two or all of these that are potentially things that she could do. So she could help with bill payments and tax preparation, which for some people is a total nightmare. Um, organize files. I mean, how many files do we organize as caregivers, including medical stuff, household stuff, um, insurance stuff? It's just a nightmare. And if you hate filing and you hate organizing that stuff, get somebody else to do it who loves to do it and who's really good at it. I put, I had a friend who loved to shop for um, clothing and I put that friend in charge of my mother's clothes. And she, she loved that responsibility because she talked to my mom about, um, you know, oh, this season, this is in. Oh, and that would look so great on you. I'm just gonna get three outfits and you can pick one because we're going to do a try on day at home and then I'll return everything that isn't, um, that doesn't fit or that you don't like. I mean, for me, I didn't want to do that. That's way too time consuming, but I had a friend who would love to do that. And that was very helpful. Um, and a person who likes to talk and sort of be in everybody else's business is a, is a, a person who is great at, as a communicator. So like if you're in the hospital with your loved one and you don't want to be like everybody's asking, oh, what's happening? I need an update. Get somebody else to do that. That's your communicator. And whenever you're asking people to say, you know, how about you pick one thing that you really like to do, that you're really good at. Um, and may, these are some ideas that I had but maybe you have a different idea. What is something that you would like to do? And, but suggesting these to somebody gets them thinking about, oh my God, I would love to do, hey, you know what? I've got an idea. I would like to. And when a person chooses for themselves, something that they're good at, something they like to do, they're in, they're out, they've, it's in the calendar, for a certain amount of time, that's a clean transaction of care. And so um, 
it's not something that potentially will overwhelm the person and make them run as fast as they can in the other direction. I so love the idea, Donna, of you know, just thinking for a couple minutes about a couple bullet points of things that this person might be able to contribute and then using that as a way to start a conversation. Because I think what you're highlighting here is this is different than a social network. This is a care network. In a social yes. network, it's just how large our network can be, more friends, more subscribers, whatever. You're really talking about kind of a mindful, purposeful, participatory opportunity and people will self self select out if they they don't want to be in or you don't have to let in everyone in because you're very as the as the project manager you're very mindful of your goal and that's yes. different yeah because there are deliverables mm -hmm. that people yeah. need to if they say they're going to make a promise to actually do something um, so everybody has a role to play it's not you know, and, and when we talk about social networks, the online care coordination tool is not social networking, mm -hmm. it's care networking. And it is very, very purposeful, just as, as you said, Zachary. So next slide, here's just very quickly. I didn't want you to think there's, I mean, everybody has, um, even guy guys who you think, oh my God, there'd be no place for somebody who loves machines and telling jokes and talking and playing cards. Like I know somebody like that. I have a neighbor like that. I love the guy. But is he the first person you think of to help out in your home with your 96-year-old mother? Well, look at the next slide. Look what he could do. Everybody has a gift. And everybody has a potentially helpful role to play in a care network, provided um, they follow through. And Danielle, thank you. I see you're just going, bye. Thank you for coming. Um, can somebody have a look at the time? I just want to make yeah, sure. Uh, you, Donna, it's uh, 3 o'clock, so we have about 30 minutes. Okay, perfect. Great. Because uh, I do want to have time for individual um, chat at the end to deal with some of your uh, caregiving challenges today um, it, here in our last uh, our our last um, session in this series. 